says he was retired on suspicion of being a member of the Paris Confraternity. My name is Charles D. Williams. And I'm Muslim as syllable. Welcome once again to our program. Former Chief Security Officer to former Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Ladiko Dia, Major Shio Fadikwe, was before the Human Rights Violations and Investigation Commission today. He confirmed to the Commission that there was indeed a coup in 1997, contrary to what his former boss, General Dia's testimony was before the Commission. He gave a detailed account of the plans and how the coup was to be executed. You, you were the, as at 1997, you were the Chief Security Officer to the petitioner. Yes, my lord. Do you know about the planning of any coup or any coup about to take place in 1997 on the 21st, 12th, 8th, and all those things of December 1997? Well, since you have mentioned three dates now, yeah. I will have to explain. Thank you. I do not know about any plot on the 8th. I was not aware of that of the 12th. Although I got to know about it on the 9th of December. And I only know about that of the 28th of December. You got to know about it on the 9th? Of the 9th of December. The 8th is gone. The 8th is gone. gone. Yes. The 12th was there. The 12th was there. I so you are, you are aware before that of the 12th? Sure. But according to, that's why I said I have to explain. Okay. It was a plan between General Bameyi mm. and General Dia to stick whatever on the 13th. And I'm so sure General Adisa and maybe other generals that were there did not know. It was after the, in fact, early morning of that bomb blast that I knew that something would have happened on the 13th. On the 13th, the day yes. of the bomb blast? of the bomb blast. General Adia and, and General, General Bame. Bame. So it's between the two of them. What would have really happened? Working together or you think is the well, well, phantom it, something they were talking no, about? Like I told you, yeah. I was aware of a plot to remove General Abacha on the 9th of December. What actually could have happened on the 13th? That's he would have been overthrown. On the hour? On the hour of, well, I don't know the time, like I said, that 13th, it was an agreed date between General Dia and General Bameyi. Yeah, I, we all understand all those. I right. said, you said it should, it should have been overthrown. I said, yes. how? Well, um, I don't know how they would have done it. And for, the, uh, for emphasis sake, General Bameyi had come here to distort information. And I'm sure that was the information that was given to uh, Major Mustafa and the late head of state. They talked about killing Major Mustafa. He talked about one coca coming to the uh, IBB, uh, for IBB to kill him. That was far from me. It was when I heard about it, when my boss told me about it, and in one of the meetings they had, the two of them, especially General Bamiyi, were this discussing about killing the head of state, killing Mustafa, bombing everywhere. Um, since I was just, I was not, I was just there for information sake. So when we got to the office the next day, I called my boss. I said, sir, when you told me this thing on the 9th, you made me believe that all the services were involved. The general staff commandings were involved. Then what is the death of Abacha or Mustafa going to be? You don't need to kill them. The only threat you have in that villa is Major Mustafa. And once Mustafa is out of the way, I mean, you don't need any other, uh, you don't need to kill anybody. He now asked me how to go about it. I said, well, we can well arrest Major Mustafa. I did that thing on two, uh, I did that for two reasons. One, for God's sake, why would you want to take another person's life to get to power? Then two, Major Mustafa is my personal friend. We have been coming together since 1981. In as much as I don't support the coup because of maybe uh, personal interest, I supported that coup for national interest. Because as at that time, even I was even ashamed to tell people that I worked in the villa. People Thank can you. testify to that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So that's all. Thank you.
Did you at any time take the sum of two million naira to Lieutenant Colonel Garba? Yes. Who gave you the two million naira? The idea. But oh, you don't know for what? Well, I knew. You knew? It was for preparation for a coup? It was on the 14th. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when, after they have discussed, General Bamina asked uh, General Dia, said, Oga, since you have, uh, we have shifted this thing now, I think we need more money. When they gave each other the 60,000 and everything, I did not know. So, in fact, that was the first day I learned that money has even exchanged hands. He now asked me, he said, don't worry, I will send my security officer to you. And right there, General Bami himself said, Paddy, when you collect the money, give it to Konegarba, I will tell him what to do with it. But to my surprise, too, even after we had been arrested, that money was never presented to the government. <laughs> so we, that is we, true. We, we, uh, come, we come to that. We come to that. Lieutenant General uh, Bamai. gave evidence here and said the former chief of general staff sent you to Fort IBD to deliver the coup speech. Is that true? Um, general Dia did not send me to take it there. Yeah. At about 3 p.m. on that Saturday, General Bami called me and said, Go to Oga and bring message to the people. I said, what do you mean? He said, just go to him, he understand. When I got to him, he gave me the speech and I took it to him. So, so General Bamey, and where I got there, I met General uh, Magachi and uh, Brigadier General Sabo. I'm sure, as an intelligence officer. Yes. Good. I'm sure you should be able to read the dominion, people's dominion. Yeah. All the time that uh, Lieutenant General Bamai was coming to meet the former Chief of General Staff, having meetings and this and that, can you say that there was seriousness in the part or action or part being played by Lieutenant General Bamai? Honestly, to actively take part. Honestly, deceiving anybody. Honestly speaking, General Bami was more than serious. The only person that never showed seriousness was General Magashi. And I made mention of that to General Adisa. It was only Magashi that I was telling him, I said, I don't trust the way this man was behaving. But left to General Bami, he was more than serious. Major Fadipa. Yes, my lord. <coughs> You will agree with me that you are one of the most important witnesses as far as petition 696 is concerned. Why did you say so? I'm saying so. You are the chief, you were the chief security officer to him. Yes. An intelligence officer. Yes. And you ran, you know, errands between the two of them. Thank yes. you very much. From everything you've listened to, evidence adduced all the periods we are here. Please, can you tell us any discussion you can find in the evidence of uh, the former chief of general staff? Any discussion, discussions or inadequacies? I'm coming to that of General Bamayi. Uh -huh. I just want them. One, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. We are not talking of the chief of uh, general staff. Yeah. Discussions yeah. in whatever evidence yeah. is given. Yes. You are on that one. Yes. There was discussion. Yes, distortion. Oh. Tell us, distortion. And um, except you have to ask me, because if I have to talk about it now, I have to relate it from the beginning. And I'm sure... Um, I don't think it will take time. Just uh -huh. it's summary of, you know, this is what happened, this is what he didn't do, this is what well, he said happened. Well, 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 like he said, because if I want to rest my case on all what he has said, that is to show that on my own, I place the life of some of the boys that were loyal to me. I placed it on, on the line and I initiated the coup on my own. Because on the, uh, on the uh, 20th, he said the generals came to him with the 
four point demand in the yeah. polling. Yeah. And there were no four point demand. Well, I am well, I was supposed to be a company commander. The reason for planning a coup is discussed at the higher level. Higher level. Whether there was actually a four point demand or not, I never knew about any four point as demand. As far as you are concerned, as as I am there concerned. was a coup plan. Yes. yes. All, okay, now, he called me and said, actually, before then, Major Mustafa is here. They have been monitoring the, uh, the former chief of minister about planning coup on OK. And Major Mustafa at times will call me and will discuss about it. Then I will relate the same thing to my boss. That period, he was always asking me if everything was well. And to the point of my own observation, things were okay. So that morning on the 9th of December, he called me and said, you security people, if this man had gone to our end of uh, yesterday, he would have been arrested. I said, who? He said, the late head of state. I said, why? He said, because the service chiefs, especially Bami and the DOCs, have all um, agreed to remove the number one man. He said, I said, why? He said, well, because the man wanted to succeed himself. I knew this disposition on the ground. I knew that would be a very difficult mission. But I had an handicap. He has told me about it. And that is, that is all. Whether I like it or not, I have to deal with it. And let me point out now that I never, I did not advise him against it. Because before man and God, I believed in that thing. There are, uh, um, Abacha was not elected into office. He got there through the barrier of the gun. If he was not doing the right thing, the, the civilian would not take him out through ballot. He has to be removed through the barrier of the gun, too. And, and if all the generals, especially those that we look up onto, have seen the wrong in this man, and they wanted him out. Definitely, who am I, the major, to say no to that? So for the, the fact that there was a point, four point demand that they said they should take to the head of state was they just excuses out of the way. Yeah. And when they were talking about this um, killing or no killing, and I discussed with him that, look, you don't need to kill anybody. He said, okay, what do you want to do about it? I said, leave that to me. I will know how to get Mr. Mustafa arrested. Well, stopping on the on the, uh, uh, chief of the former chief of general staff yes. now. It is to your it is your firm belief that he not only planned this coup, yes. he sponsored the coup. Well, at least with, with the amount I took there. Thank you. Let's go to Lieutenant General Bama. All right. Yes. You said from his. Dominion. It was more than serious. It was more than serious. <laughs> mm. So did you notice any inconsistencies in his statements? You were here yesterday. You were here today. Um, yes. yes. Like, I'm sure he must have fed Major Mustafa with the fact that he was supposed to kill Major Mustafa. That's Bama, uh, Lieutenant General Bama. Yes. yes. Whether himself or the Konegaruba. Yes. But, he is here. Major Mustafa is here. When Major Mustafa called me, I warned him. I said, sir, he's my senior. I said, sir, I know whether good or bad, whether God will uh, uh, let me survive it or not, I am on my own now. But I want to warn you that you are pursuing a wrong set of people. But there are some people out there because really we don't have a truth. If they are even charged up for concealment and the rest, well, I will agree. But we, if not for the fact that General Bamiyi played on the intelligence of General Dia, he told him, because we were supposed to arrest Mr. Mustafa, I gave them that idea, idea. using chloroform. And if they had done that, General Bamiyi and his boys were supposed to have carried out that assignment. But 
Last minute, I don't know what happened between Jerabameyi and Jaradia. Jaradia called me and said, look, Bameyi said he has no boys that I should take my boys to him to effect Major Mustafa's um, arrest. And I told him, sir, how can he say he does not have truth on my boys? He has intelligent, intelligent boys working with him. Well, he just said, well, go and give him all the necessary support. And um, that was all. Now, when uh, yeah, Major Mustafa was supposed to be arrested, this same coca that he said he came into the barracks to kill him was far from me. I'd already told the man that I would send the boys to him with his security officer. It was supposed to be done in his house. But when I left and I sent the boys to them, they changed the venue. When the boy saw it, especially this same coca I mentioned, he saw that the place was not conducive. He ran back to me and said, oh, that look. They said you should do some sort of thing. Are you sure you are aware of this thing? And this is where they took us to. I said, if that is the case, go back. Get the boys back to the uh, August residence. I will discuss with um, General Gia that General Bameyi is trying to play something point that I do not understand. But unfortunately for us, they had already arrested the boys that were there. They uh, immediately Koga got to the uh, Fort IBB gate. He was arrested there at Fort IBB. He knows the boys very well. The boy wanted to uh, receive arrest. But I thank God today because if he had done that, I mean, they, they, they know this. They, they all know the boy very well, especially Major Mustafa. If they had done that, we would not be here talking about what we are saying today. We would have been shot because somebody would have been killed. And we would have said, oh, somebody was killed resisting arrest. Thank you very much. Now let's get to the SMT, the Special Military Tribunal. You pleaded guilty. Yeah. With reason, you said. Yeah, with reason. From the totality of the evidence you've given, what would you say made you to plead guilty? Is it the concealment, <coughs> not telling the C and C? Or at least you told the chief security officer to the C and C? No, I didn't tell him. You didn't tell him? I didn't tell him anything. Or are you saying before we were arrested? That is what I'm saying. Oh, no, no, I didn't tell him anything. You see, at, if, if at, I told him at, at the at the at the SMT, yes, you were already arrested. You were there for your yes, you were there for a trial. Yes, my lord. Yes. What I'm saying is, from the totality of the evidence you've given, the way things went yes. up and down, yes. you did not get involved until your boss called you in. Sure. And if I might use uh, Mustafa's words, you were under command. Yes, I was under command. So you could not refuse it? I could not refuse it. My Lord, there will be no further question for you. How many are... Uh, yes? Want to close them? It's all right. Major Fadi, Fadi Pe, my Lord. When people say 1997 coup is a phantom coup, is a hoax, is an RNG coup, how does it affect you when you listen to that kind of thing? Uh, honestly, I wanted not to testify without my boss before. But I made up my mind to say it. Because honestly, my heart aches when I learned about the, uh, the, the testimony of General Bameyi and General Dia. When you talk of Phantom Coup, maybe between them, if Major Mustafa will be sincere here, they did not know the whole details about this coup. He's here now, he's alive. General uh, Bacha might be dead now, but I'm sure Major Mustafa is here. He does not know much about this coup. 
because if he knew so much about it, definitely the lot of people that, that were arrested, they wouldn't have arrested them. There are some people that they should have arrested, not because of coups, if actually they were, they were carrying out surveillance. Because I know, I got in touch with a lot of people towards the end, not for the coup, they should have been arrested. I am sure something happened between General Bameyi and General Dia. Which you can't explain. Which I can't explain. Thank you very much. So, Phantom or no Phantom, I think the two of them that can explain <laughs> what is Phantom. <laughs> Thank you very much. Look at me very well. Have you ever met me? No. So I'll be right to say that you don't know me. I don't know you. Thank you very much. Will I be correct to say that you still love your career in the army that was prematurely terminated by that coup? <laughs> um, if you know me very well, I like the army war. Thank you very much. No, no, wait. Sir. And I have put in everything I had into this job. But there is a problem there. If I go back to the army now, how will I feel? I will leave that to God to direct me. Thank you very much. And I hope uh, the direction will be your going back to the army. Do you know one? Uh, Major Mumuni. I know him very well. Was he in, uh, in Jos with you? Absolutely, he was there. Thank you very much. And that was the only time you saw him in Jos? Mm -hmm. Or oh, you know him previously before going to Jos? Uh -huh. He was like a boy to me, he was my junior. Oh, okay, that's it. I know him very well, even in service, we were in the same uh, intelligence corps. Oh, okay. Even in NDA, he was like a baby to me. Like that. <laughs> How do you feel when your boss prayed that all those who participated in either transporting you to jobs or for the trial or F FIP should all be retired because they didn't do their work well? Um, well, if I say that here, I will not be fair to them, and it's like I don't have the fear of God in me. Thank you, Because, brother. you know why I said this? Yes. Personally, I knew what I was getting into the, the moment I knew about that plot. And the day I was arrested, I knew that was all. But I want to thank God for one thing. And I want to thank the whole nation, the Nigerians, Christians, Muslims, their prayers help. Because if not for their prayers, I'm sure we will not be here today. One or two things will have happened. Now, left to these people that took care of us. Honestly, personally, I don't know of any other person. Personally, I think the only thing those people didn't do for me was to release me. Thank you. They were particularly nice to me. They took care of me. That is very good. And who are those people? Led by who? No, not, I mean, military police, soldiers, SSS. I mean, I am talking about myself Thank as you Major Fadi Peden. Thank you very much. He took care of me. So I have no reason to say anybody should be sent out of the job. Okay. Finally, I won't thank Nigerians for praying for you. Yes. We will still go for that to pray, to pray for you. And I represent the Muslim sect. Yes. May Allah <laughs> save you and make Nigeria benefit from your world of experience in relation to honesty. Amen. And may you have a happy Christmas Thank and you. a prosperous new year. Thank you very much. <laughs> My Lord, sir, I will say a prayer for Major Fadi Pei for the Christian sect. Oh, uh, that's from this the moment, sir, let the righteousness of God go before you and his glory be your real God. Amen. Amen. My lord, we have an enemy around, whether he will have his bike. Hold on. Uh, we promised you that we will adjourn if you request. Are you requesting for cross uh, may, may I just say one word, sir? Mm. All right. Thank you, sir. Another prayer? Mm. We have had one on both sides. Oh, go on. Not, not a prayer, sir. I see. Just one or two questions, sir. All right, go on. Um, Ibrahim Adamu again for Alhaji Muhammad Sanyabashi. 
Sir, uh, what was your part? Do you know Al Haji Muhammad Tani Abachan? You know very well. Anyway. What was your relationship with him? Would you describe it as cordial? Well, well it, was, it, it was cordial because I was closer to the uh, other brother that died before him. Yeah. Yes. So before this incident, it was cordial. Something happened that day. And honestly speaking, huh? whatever that must have happened there, I've all resigned everything to God, and whatever I feel he has done to me, I've forgiven him. From the bottom of my heart, I've forgiven him. That's all. That's all right, brother. Uh, my Lord, sir. Yes. Uh, in as much as I don't have any objection to going to Abuja, but I want to make one passionate plea here. Yes. If I will be summoned to go to Abuja, I don't think I will use my personal money to go there and cater for myself. That will be looked after. Okay, sir. Mm. Okay, sir. You have some witnesses who came here had the same problem. Yes, this uh, next Abuja session. Yes. All right. Major Hamza Al Mustafa has given a detailed description of how General Diaz's arrest for the 1997 coup was effected. He also gave an insight into events leading to the meeting between General Diaz and late General Sani Abacha, where General Diaz allegedly wept and knelt, pleading with the late General Abacha. You have heard and listened to one General Oladi Podia, ex General Oladi Podia, sorry. Yes, my lord. Uh, the allegation against you was that. You led two times to his house to arrest mm -hmm. him. Yes. Can you just briefly say what you know about this, this, this issue? Yes, my lord. With regards to this assertion in the petition, my lord, I say that when the government of Jonathan Abacha came to power in 1993, decision was taken by the government in which the petitioner, ex General Diaz, along with service chief, took decision to, to withdraw all tanks from the hinterland to their traditional role at the border unit. So as at the time the issue of 1997 coup came, there was not a single tank in Abuja. The nearest place where a tank could be sorted for was Bauchi or Maiduguri. So there was nothing like a tank in Abuja. And the issue of the arrest of the petitioner, I was not the one who effected his arrest. Two boys effected his arrest, namely Jatau and one Abdul Rahman, an SS officer. Jatau is a sergeant. They arrested the petitioner at OAU quarters at the residence of Isaac Adebowale one of his SSS attached security personnel. And it was true that shortly after all those he sent out with a view to have capturing Abuja and taking over the villa were all arrested. Now it remained the only the sponsor of the coup, that is the petitioner. And when everybody was assembled, the assassination teams were arrested now, to confirm that he was at home, I called his house. It's true, I telephoned. I called him through the intercom inside the presidency. When he picked, he had my voice. He quickly dropped the phone because by the plan, I was supposed to be shot at 9 p.m. that night. So he dropped. I now called again through the operator. They couldn't link me up. Instead, they linked me up to the gate. And it was there when they linked me up to the gate, I now became aware that he was now running out of the house. Then I took my car with one SS officer that was outside, and I now drove straight to his house. As I was going, he had already went out. But those boys who were there at other gates now followed him up to OAU quarters where they effected his arrest and brought him. And this is the much I can say concerning the arrest, my lord. Okay. You, you are equally in this commission when the petitioner 
uh, alleged that there was an interview on the tape and then uh, change of dress and all. Will you want to assist the commission by just quickly throwing light on that? No, without wasting time. Yes, my lord. First of all, uh, this is of importance. And that's why I said before that no coup, to the best of my knowledge, had had the overwhelming exhibits like the coup of 1997 in Nigeria's history. And I'm saying this from the privilege I have had to first in 1990 be in a place where by my appointment became the custodian of coup records and then to army headquarters, then Ministry of Defense, then the presidency. So on this, on the issue of tape, on this case, my lord, is to say that all the meetings they have had with the sponsor, with the petitioner, were audio, were tapped using audio tape. And then the transcription of those tapes were done by me. It was my handwriting. Then second is to say that after their arrest, an idea came on having to have a chat with all of them while they were in Abuja using this video secret camera. And for emphasis here, my lord, and of importance, it was the National Intelligence Agency that provided the video equipment. The technical section of NI is of importance because I know they were keeping their own personal copies too. So here, I had two different interviews with the petitioner, two different interviews with General Adisa, and two different interviews with General Olari Waji. Major Fadipe, I had one with him. The lady who typed the coup speech, I had one video discussions with her, and Major Sheraton, Lieutenant Commander Sheraton, the finance officer. I had also discussions with him on tape. These were the ones I talked with. Of importance here, my lord, is a, an argument that is still standing on the issue of dress worn by the petitioner. The petitioner was arrested in jacket. The film you saw between himself and General Abacha, that was the dress he was arrested with. And that was my first interview. On that day, I had had discussions, but the interview with him, then later on, the late head of state now said he should also be brought to have discussions with him on the coup. And NIA wired everywhere and they did it. Why that theme was not clear with the late CNC was because of the central air conditioning system. The NIA can explain the technical theme. But then there were some machines that were made to improve on the voice. I'm sure the SIT and the SMT, if they bring their own documents to this honorable body, we will hear it clearly, my lord. Then the second interview was done with General Dia in another dress. In another dress because when he appeared before General Abacha for the first time, he knelt, cried, asked for forgiveness, and was even requesting that General Abacha should please forgive him and forget, not knowing that all the audio tapings of the coup were, as they were happening, being presented to the late CNC. So he requested that he should forgive him finally, and that's why he knelt for the second time, for the second time and it was from there. Now, General Abacha said, you want to go home, you can go. If you even watch the film, you'll find out at the end of it, General Abacha was trying to wave his hand like this. It was to me he was referring to, because I was the one who brought the petitioner to the late CNC. So when I came, he, he told, he, the, light, the letter of that now said, he is requesting to go home, but you know the matter at hand. Tell the SSS to take him back to the Director General SSS guest house at Asokoro, where he was kept. Then there is uh, this issue of the CDS and the Brigade of Guard. I don't know what you would want to equally be very brief. Yes, my lord, it's of importance. The guard at the residence of the petitioner are of two categories, my lord. One, the soldiers were being provided to the entire presidency by Brigade of Guards, not by, by Major Mustafa. Brigade of Guards has a traditional role of providing soldiers every week 
to the entire villa and they are changed and a fresh team comes in on a weekly basis. But again, the petitioner had his bodyguards, mobile police complements, SSLs, so many attached to him to himself, headed by his own security officer, Major Fadikwe, who is also here, and I hope he will clarify more air to that. But to say that it was Mustafa who provides all his soldiers, so he had no right to do anything. That is far from it, my lord. The soldiers I provide are those who man the entire gates at the presidency. That is to say, when, when the Brigade of Gas brings them on a weekly basis, they now come under me, under command for that week, period, my lord. Then, to help the commission quickly, we want to abide by our promise. We will go within 30 minutes. The, are you aware that at any time after the arrest of the petitioner, there was one small spot with some candles, red candle with some names written on it by, by way of charms and concoction? Yes, my lord. This is, uh, I'm sure details of it will be found with the details from the SIT, but it was when the house was initially opened, we were now looking for, one, the computer that was used in typing the speech. It was found in the house. It was brand new computer set with printers mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. In the process, my lord, coming to the house, one, that was specifically what I came to look for. In the process, we found a copy of the cool speech under the pillow of the petitioner in his personal, in his main master bedroom. So the concoction being asked by my counsel, my lord, were now found with list of so many people in the government. The name of the late head of state was first, with needles, uh, several, uh, something like blood, red candles, some leaves, uh, and I request that this Honorable Commission actually look for this. Well, copy from uh, the SIT, my lord. My lord, at this position, we will equally be making a request, an oral application that the Commission should ask the CDS to ask the SIT where these things are being kept to be produced in our Abuja city. Just for the purpose of seeing, my lord, not for anything. Then. Uh, request in writing to them. Uh, uh, Okay, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that, my lord. Then let's quickly go. How did you get to know about the coup? I initially was informed by the late CNC. That is, after he had had his initial discussions with General Obama. In the petitioner alleged that he was tortured in jail. Were you in jail, or did you instruct anybody to go to jail for the purpose of torturing the petitioner? Never ever, my lord. My lord, that would be all. I was in Jos to face the military tribunal myself. And I did on the account of my own role. That is to say, on these archives kept. And because of the involvement of officers in security department in the presidency. My lord, that would be all for the witness. And I'm sure we are below 30 minutes. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, my Lord has not congratulated me on being... I said thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I want it in French. <laughs> my Lord, uh, I have a few, one or two questions for the witness. I'm Ibrahim Adamu. I'm cross-examining on behalf of al Haj Mohammed Sani Abacham. Uh, so would I be right to say you know Ahaj Muhammad Sani Abacha very well? I do, my lord. Um, the petitioner has alleged that there was a torture group to which you and Ahaj Muhammad Sani Abacha belong. Is that correct? There was nothing like that. Was there any role played by al Haji Muhammad Sani Abacha uh, during the arrest or detention, I mean, detain, de 
intention of uh, the coup suspect? No, to the best of my knowledge, he played no role in anybody's arrest. Was there anything to indicate that Al Haji Muhammad Sani Abacha was himself a target in the coup plot? To the best of your knowledge. As to the best of my knowledge, the entire family was under threat. The entire family was under threat. And that's why I, on my own, confined all of them to within the villa. I allowed none to go out. Yeah. In the circumstance like that, could it, uh, would it be right to assume that Al Haji Muhammad Sani Abacha was in safe under confinement because of the threat to the first family. This I did, my lord. Thank you very much. Major Mustafa, my lord, to your knowledge, how many of successful coups had the petitioner been involved in? That is the S. Janadir. I very much know of that of 1994 and 1997. Thank you very much. So the 1997 one was not his first attempt. To the best of my knowledge, my lord. As the chief security officer to the late head of state, I am sure you will be familiar, at least of some degree, about the happening in 1995, especially as it's related to the coup of 1995. Am I right? Some degree, correct, my lord. Well, that's why I qualified. You are aware that a number of investigating panels were set up to determine, one, whether there was a coup plot, and number two, the degree of complicity of officers. Am I right? It usually, my lord, used to be the pattern from the content of the convening, uh, I mean, as uh, signed by convening authority. What I'm trying to say is that there were a number of panels. So much evidence had been given on that. And uh, among the panel set up, the chairman of the coordinating of the various panels was Major General Mujakwero. Am I right? Yes, my lord. And one of those who also investigated whether there was a plot was retired, I don't know whether to use the word retired, <coughs> Lieutenant Colonel Omenka, Frank Omenka. He was one of them. Yes, my lord. At, at that time, my lord, pardon me if I don't answer uh, very much, that's why I say some. Yes, I'm. I'm, uh, I'm I was uh, in Abuja, they sat here in Lagos. Well, I don't know whether you did anything, but in your own view, taking an overview as somebody who had laid life down to the protection of the late head of state, which you say you will repeat, what I'm asking is that from your own perception, do you believe that there was a coup in 1995? There was a coup. Thank you because Colonel Bellop, I'd better make an emphasis here because everybody has his own definition of what is phantom or what is real. To me, Colonel Ben Lopadile came to one division headquarters and recruited Colonel Shuaib of an impending coup. Now, the issue of whether it is phantom or not, in my personal <coughs> assessment, is to say that whether some people were arrested because they were involved or not, is a different thing entirely. But I think the contents of the team I gave but I'm, I'm satisfied with your answer. Thank you, my lord. So it, it will not be correct as Frank, let's not corner Frank Omeka said in Exhibit 20, which is already before the commission, a purported interview he gave <laughs> that there was no coup in 1995. A vote says from what he said in 1995 and what he said or was alleged to have said in 1999. If there was such a statement, Will you be surprised? My Lord, going by my personal experience, Colonel Frank has not been here. I have never had any contact with Colonel Frank for almost last two years some months. So, so my Lord, oh, I'm coming. The issue you are referring to is an interview in a magazine. Yes. If I was arrested because of contents of an interview purportedly to be given by me in a magazine, 
then I can tell you I am far away from accepting what is in the magazine or the paper. The trend for some years now has been that some people have specialized in writing interviews for and on behalf of whomsoever they wish to deal with. So if I put my own description, I don't know whether you agree with me, I will put SB20 as curious. Do you agree with me? It's a uh, curious document. My, as far as my experience is, co is concerned, I don't trust any interview presented by any magazine. This no. is my well, we, are, we are saying the same thing. No. So that means it is curious. No, to make it clear, yes. this is my position, my lord. In an answer to your question, so long Colonel Frank has not been here to defend it, then as far as I'm concerned, I'm relating it to my experience, Th my thank lord. You, thank you very much. You, um, let's come to the 1997 coup. Yes, you, have, you have said so much, I just want a confirmation. Do you see confirmed that there was a coup in the making in 1997? 1997, I repeat, is the coup that has had the most overwhelming exhibit in the history of coups in Nigeria. And from your deep involvement in that investigation, do you still maintain that the mastermind that was ex Janadia? Well, do you respect my lord? The interviews I have had with the people I made mention of earlier in itself finish the beginning and the end of the coup. My Lord, that's a deal. Major Al Mustafa. My Lord. Uh, you know Major General D. M. Magashi. Yes, my Lord. He was a regular visitor to the villa, particularly to see the C and C. That's correct. Correct, my Lord. Um, Cast your mind back to the day on which arrests were effected. Yes, my lord. Uh, he was in the villa on that day. Yes, my lord. In particular, he was in your office. Yes, my lord. In fact, he was in your office at the point in time when Dia was brought into your office. Yes, my lord. Was there any point at which you pretended... Oh, let, me, let, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase the question. Um, was he at any time under arrest while he was in your office? Uh, thank you, my lord. I, I think I need to throw more light here. I know this issue was discussed before. At, at the time, the petitioner was arrested and being brought to the villa. I was at JB Junction. What we were doing then was to make sure that all the exits of Abuja were sealed so that the petitioner could not run out of Abuja. But we didn't know that two of our staff saw him and they followed quietly, and when he entered the house, they went and effected his arrest. So before I could come from there, which was further away from OAU quarters where the petitioner was arrested, they had already reached the villa along with him. So when I came, I now met the petitioner seated in my office along with the ADC to the late head of state. Now, what they said happened was, General Magashi, along with General Barmai and some other senior officers were seated there waiting, monitoring from radio all the happenings when the petitioner was brought into the office. So what they did was they just came out and he went in to sit. Of course, I don't want to talk about the other issues of uh, uh, the ridiculous, so I don't want to go into that. But what happened was, I never came, saluted them, and said, you are all under arrest along with him. This is something I never ever. First of all, I didn't even meet them there in the office. It was him I met in my office alone. So he was so sitting in your office alone? When and you alone entered. with the ADC. The ADC to the late head of state, Colonel Abdullah, was just there keeping him watch because the arrangement along with other agencies to keep them in custody pending when the convening authority will now establish SIP was already agreed. Because a day to execute the coup at all costs, which was the 20th of the 21st, was already set. So I never saluted anybody besides as a CSO. I don't wear a uniform. As a major, I wore uniform twice before I posted into Enugu. The day I was decorated, 
and they will took us of office, different from normal us. If you are in security department, you must take a certain oath before the commander in chief, which is to say that you stand to die there. It's a different oath in itself. You fight to the last. Thank you very much, sir. Major Amusafa. Why not? When did you first became aware of the 1997 school? Um, like I said, the late head of state told me yes, about aware. the briefing. I, when, when. I cannot vividly recall, but maybe September or so. I don't know. Towards last quarter of the year. Of the year, 1997. So let's, let's just take it from. I can't vividly recall, but in the film, the video, uh, the audio tape that I transcribed earlier, when this August body gets the document from the SRT, it speaks for itself there. So on the basis of assumption, we just say September. No, the records are there. Let's, uh, I cannot be specific. Now, after hearing about the coup, definitely they were all under surveillance. Correct. Mm. Surveillance by whom? No, General, General, Lieutenant General no. Bamai. No, I'm coming. Yes. By, my Lord. Excuse me. Lieutenant General Bamai told the CNC about the, about the coup. You as the CSO to the, the CNC, definitely would know. So, the alleged copy must be under surveillance. Am I right? Yes, the emphasis, if you will allow me, my Lord, to make is what surveillance is all about. Because you asked me of surveillance the other time when we were talking about the airport uh, incident. Mm. Surveillance, in this case, is the role of a certain department, SSS. They keep their chart one side, and then the activities of the coup is being compiled also on the other side. I just want to make this assertion. Thank you very much. <coughs> now, you are here when Lieutenant General Bamai was giving evidence. Yes, my lord. And uh, he did talk of the D-Day. Yes, my lord. Yeah. Was the 12th of December, 1997, the D-Day? It was. it was. And again, if several days were slated for the execution of 1997 coup, yeah. the way I saw it, it was a case with due respect to the petitioner, with due respect, I repeat, a case of somebody who wants to sit as a king telling his subjects to execute it only to find himself there. That was the case of 1997 coup. Thank you. Whenever they agreed, the audio content will speak. I'm talking from that. Whenever they agreed, they will sit back awaiting the execution. Friday, the 12th, was supposed to be a very terrible day. We were supposed to be hit at on our way to the mosque. We were supposed to be hit at on our way back. Or at work, they said, if the need becomes real, uh, obvious, they should hit in the mosque. But that was the worst option for that day. The late head of state didn't go. One of the reasons why the petitioner says Mustafa held General Abacha captive is in papers. Not because I had, because he refused to avail himself for any of the plans. Thank you. The Lieutenant General, Bamai, told us in his response, which was read out here, that uh, the, the coup was supposed to have come up first, which was a failed one, at Enugu during the chief of uh, army staff conference. Correct, my lord. Correct. <coughs> the Enugu one was not successful because the CNC did not go. Am I right? Correct. Right. But I think there is the need to say how they agreed. I, I'm, I have my reasons. Please, I, I have my reasons, my lord. Please. I will allow you to. All right, my lord. Please. Now, on the 8th field, 
Find it twelve. Detail. Right? On the twelfth day. And the chief or principal suspect was allowed to travel or granted permission to travel to Mapoli for the burial of uh yeah. Yes, my lord. On that same day, there was that bomb blast. Correct. The two victims were member, members of who did you together? Yes, um, bodyguard. 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 Thank you. Would I be right to say that if the belief was there that that coup was to take place on the 12th, it failed. Then what next? Let us get rid of him by bombing the plane. Is that the right? No, far from that. This case, I said, was initially investigated. Mm. The police should have a report about that. I made a statement with that defense, and I'm sure several other officers too. This is additional 